How's it going, you beautiful people? My name is Zach and welcome back. Today we're doing a reaction video, but it's a little bit different because I'm gonna be reacting to some of my old music. So a quick backstory, back in 2018, I went to this rock and roll recording camp in the hills of Vermont and learned about a little thing called DistroKid and found out that I could actually submit my songs to Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff without like a record label. And at the time, that was the most most mind-blowing thing in the world and I had a couple songs that I had been writing over in um gosh at the time I was using FL Studio which I have no hate for FL Studio is a great DAW I use Logic now and I have a better time with it just because it fits my style more but I had a couple songs in my FL Studio projects and wasn't like seriously writing at the time but definitely wanted to get some of my songs out online and, and to see them on Spotify was a pretty cool thing so kind of jumped on that and released my first EP Four Strings and simple things in 2018 on what day was it july 24th oh my god today so today is july 25th this is not this is not a setup at all honest to god literally did not know that it was the five year anniversary of this album that's actually crazy well i guess that's that's the occasion now i'm gonna be listening to some of my old music um and uh we're just gonna we're just gonna see what happens i might cringe in this quite a bit because i do think that the stuff i was writing back then and producing back then wasn't great but at the time i thought it was great and the most important thing is that i'm just appreciating the growth that i've had from point a to point b and how i'm just gonna continue to grow because i think the stuff i'm writing now i'm gonna have the same reactions to what i'm gonna have in this very video so uh let's get started and listen to a couple songs all right throw the cans on i'm literally gonna start with very first technically first song i've ever released uh it's called interlude which is just an instrumental and i i actually have I haven't really listened to these songs in a long time, so I'm, I'm curious to kind of experience this again. Let's get started. Got the little pad. I thought I was so epic with that intro too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the bass did not even hit. That was supposed to be a drop. <laughs> Okay, really quick thing about this too that I just remembered. The piano that you're hearing is not me actually like playing through MIDI. I literally found that sample on like Splice or something. So it's just a piano line that I put chords under, which is like cool, but <laughs> at the time, oh man. All right. fits right it, it totally fits it's just it's just funny okay i'm gonna listen to two more from this ep um i'm gonna listen to lullaby because that was the one that i think popped off the most and i think that was the one i was most proud of at the time i actually performed this one live at that rock and roll camp which is kind of cool mix is horrendous. I had a very strong like string piano ballad phase for sure. It's so funny to hear the vocal chain difference. We love MIDI strings, don't we guys? We love MIDI strings. It's so sarcastic. <laughs> The concept is totally there, it's just the production makes it a little bit unappealing. I love this little motif though. That 
that's the thing. That's the thing that I lacked at the time, that dynamic contrast where I think everything was just like incredibly compressed so that like the climactic moment in the song was literally the same DB level as the quiet like beginning part, which at now just like totally frustrates me. So it's like I back when I wrote this, I thought this was the most epic thing ever. But now it's kind of like, OK, cool. He's just singing the hook again. I do like the counter melody and the strings. Boom, there's that one. <laughs> I mean, it's a fun one. Like, it's definitely one of my favorite older ones, just because I feel like the song itself is decent, but the production and, and the execution of it's not fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna listen to one more. <laughs> I kind of want to listen to, I kind of want to listen to Breakaway. So Breakaway was like the EDM, po like really poppy track on this EP. And I, was this the one that I, I think I performed this at my high school with like a track and I was sitting on a chair on a stage singing it. And I thought I was the shit. <laughs> But I will give myself credit at the time. Taking my time, I know that's a hard pill to take. For the floor kick. But through my bruises, I'm <laughs> The kick is so thin. So damn okay, this is where I, I discovered like so automation. <laughs> if you wanna be the greatest for the world to see. The classic high cut automation. Put your hands up if you wanna do whatever's <laughs> Okay, at the time, and, and like even a little bit now, I'm okay with like the drop because it's got like its own little counter melody thing happening and like sonically, it's fairly filled out. The mix is trash. The mix is absolute garbage, but this is definitely the most put together song on this EP without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move on to the album. So this, Four Strings of Simple Things was the EP. It was five songs. Then, um, literally four months later, is that four months later? July? July? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So four months later, on October 23rd, so literally almost exactly four months later, I released a nine-track album, which is called Defining Gratitude. And I was like, maybe trying to come up with a theme because the first song is literally called Definition. I actually think it's a... Yeah, this is just like an instrumental, which I'm not going to play that one. Um, but I was kind of like obsessed with the whole like putting songs on Spotify and all that. So I was like, I'm just going to write and produce a bunch of mediocre songs just to get them out. And now looking at that, I'm like, holy crap. And I would basically give maybe like a week of promotion for these tracks. And oh my gosh, at the time I thought it was genius. But now I'm like, why? Why would you do that? And and I did that a little bit with 22, which I'll go over in a little bit. But like I now I want to make sure that like... I'm putting everything I can into a song to make sure that it's the best that it can be and that I'm I'm satisfied with. I, I had the um, fortunate opportunity to talk to Jack Antonoff, Taylor Swift's producer, 1975 producer. Um, he was doing this convention and I was able to ask him just when when do you feel a song is ready? And, and he gave great advice and just simply he put, a song is ready when you get incredibly excited to share it with your friends and your your fan base. And and it's so hard to sit there and, and kind of think about all the things that you need to do to make this one step better. But if you're already at this point where you're really satisfied with it and kind of look at the big picture of how it sounds sonically, is the song written well, you can figure out mixing and mastering if that's you or if that's someone else. The song is done. If you're proud of it and you're excited to share it with someone, then the, the level from where it's at at that point to where it could be perfect, which you'll never get to is so little that it's not worth that mental strain mental energy that's that's my opinion i know people might argue with that but that that is definitely something that i wish i told my my 17 year old self when i when i first released these songs okay enough babbling on that we're gonna listen to like two songs from this album um gosh through the hills and the valleys little upbeat one okay <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just realized I haven't heard this in so long. I just realized that I made the dumbest error with this 
entire album every single song i think except for one i produced it all out and it was great and then i put the i literally put the mixes into a spreader and i spread it left and right rather than like panning individual instruments and stuff left and right to make the stereo image more like there i literally just widened everything and when you're listening to it it sounds brutal and i i cannot i've like considered taking some of these songs because these are better written songs i think and actually like re-recording them reproducing them because i completely forgot that's probably the reason why i don't listen to this at all oh my god it's, it's a little more produced out <laughs> the bass too i love it <laughs> <laughs> the bass too is so compressed or not the bass the drums gotta be honest i'm gonna be honest with you oh one of the worst lyrics ever i gotta skip to the end here here we go <laughs> this went hard all right that's enough of that that's enough of that okay um oh man i really want to play this train wreck but i'm not going to if you okay if you want to oh man this honestly might be the worst produced song that i've ever actually released i am not gonna play it unless you really want me to if this video if this video gets 20 likes i will play it i'm probably making a bigger deal out of it than than it actually is but it is bad it is really bad so 20 likes and i will play that video let's do let's do miles i was actually kind of happy with this one there's a lot of ukulele this very ukulele too, my little friend. I was listening to so much Ben Rector here too. It was early like, I guess it was his brand new album. Or the album was called Brand New. Skip to the chorus. Obviously I hadn't discovered pitch correction yet. Yeah, at the time that was definitely I think my well thought out most well thought out song. All right, let's let's uh listen to some more mature panning, I think. We're going to jump to 2019, Dose of Reality, which was a uh which was a 12 song album um which was mixed a little bit better, but still not fantastic, but I do enjoy these songs a little bit more. Oh man, so many to choose from. So many to choose from. Dancing in the Rain. It's definitely better. I was starting to kind of get it. It had been a year. Oh, but the vocals. There's no low end there. There is no low end there. And there needs to be a de -esser. But I do like this song. Can you feel the rest? There was like little vocal stuff happening. In the rain. I'm skipping to the best part of this entire song though. Standing here in Central Park, I've been thinking about my mom. She said to follow Absolute my heart, rap so god. I took all my givens and I ripped them apart. Cause I don't wanna be forgiven for the life that I started in the park trying to make it. Suddenly, like a beam, it comes to me. I was stressing over everything I didn't need. Obviously, at first it's not easy to see, but now I'm writing motivated letters to the future me. I never Okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. All right, Boston, the meme of Boston. I don't need you to listen to Boston. If you know, you know. We're just going to jump to 20. We're going to go to 20, and we're going to listen to two songs from 20, and that'll be it. And that'll be the end of our, our throwback five-year anniversary of when it all started. Oh, but what to listen to on 20? I don't know. You know what? I I am going to listen to... Okay, wait. So I've done Rooming with the Devil. I've done 20, because there's production stuff on that. So you can see that on my channel. Um... Okay, here we go. Listen, people usually ask me what my favorite song on 20 was, and all pretty much, I think every single time, I always say Rosie, which is crazy because I feel like this is the forgotten song on this album. There's like one or two people that I know that this is like their favorite, but I don't know. I think just the way it was written, I think this was actually the last song that I wrote for the album, and it was kind of, it was like, I released, I 
literally released the album on January 4th, my birthday, and I think this one finished on January 1st. Like, the whole thing was done, and then I just submitted the whole thing to DistroKid, and it came out a couple days late, actually, because of that. Um, but this song, I just, I don't know what it is. I love it so much, so let's listen to it. Rosie, you're scared to be lonely. So I switched to the SM7B. I love the lyrics in this, too. Here we go. Rosie, you're the sun, they're the stars that surround you. Rosie, you're the one that the world's looking up to. You're like a foreign work of art, and you know it. Rosie, look around. Rosie. I want to do more of these atmospheric type things. Not very often where I'll get hyped over my own song, I will say. And I hope, I hope, this, like, I hope that I'm not acting like I'm being super, like, braggy, like, oh yeah, like, all this stuff, this is great. It's kind of more of just, like, a reminiscing on what once was and appreciating the growth that has happened <laughs> since 2018, you know? Okay, last one is going to have to be Finale. This will be the last song. And I love this one because there's just so much happening. heavy strings gosh my fantasies of recording live strings too i got that opportunity in college but it's literally just night and day okay so this is a bunch of my friends from school i arranged this little four-part thing and it sounded beautiful So that right there, that little line, that was actually a throwback to Lullaby, which is the first song I played. Just a little piano line in there. I kind of, I purposely put that in. And then it's like this climactic moment after just a pause. And so that's the melody line from um, 20, which is like the first song in the track. It was so cinematic, it's crazy. I think even now I've I've kind of delved away from like a lot of that orchestral pop stuff. I still love it so so much, but I just don't think it it matches sounds that I'm doing now, which is completely fine. I totally think that I'll continue to do stuff like that, but it's just not something that's going to be on any upcoming releases, I don't think. Thought it was over? You didn't think I was gonna end this album with a party? I am. All your love! <laughs> I thought I was so cool. Just did a little tag from a bunch of the songs on the album. Oh, <laughs> and that was it. A little cheesy. I will fully, fully admit that was that was quite the cheesy ending, calling it finale and all that. But uh, yeah, man, good times. I genuinely cannot believe that was over two years ago. <sighs> well, happy five years to releasing music on Spotify. That's so funny. I genuinely was not prepared for that. Um, but uh, thank you to everyone that's listened to my music along the way. And um, if this is your first time hearing some of it and you want to go listen to the rest of my discography, first, I'm so sorry. I would say go more to the recent stuff, but I appreciate appreciate you thank you and uh again i'll keep doing these reaction videos um send me some songs tracks albums you want me to listen to and as always i'll see you in the next video peace